After my video about the DualSense fine tuning menu, I got a lot of questions whether it was also possible for the DualShock 4. And the short answer is no, because there is just no fine tuning menu available. It hasn't been discovered yet how to do that. But there are other ways how you can manipulate the normal calibration, which is possible on DualShock 4, just so that you can still fine tune it in a way. One of the methods that I still see sometimes on Discord and in other YouTube videos is that you can put a little bit of duct tape around the shaft of the thumb cap. So right here, which uh, increases the diameter and then you can rotate it so that you can have a larger range. And that's often the issue with TMR joysticks or Hall Effect joysticks because um, they suffer just like this one from a very low range. And that's something to keep in mind of because as I explained in my DualSense video, that's not something you want. This will introduce a lot of issues in games, such as very sluggish movement, and you won't really move to your fullest speed in the corners. Luckily, there is an easier way to fix it. You don't really need tape even. I find that a bit inconsistent. Like You need to increase the range in all directions uniformly, and sometimes that's not really necessary. Like right here, we can see that the left side, it needs a bit more range, but rather the right joystick, the right side, it already has a little bit of overshoot. So we don't want to overdo it on that side. But with the method that I'm gonna show you now, you can do it in all directions separately, which in my opinion is just better than using the tape around the shaft. But first, I'm gonna just demonstrate something so that you understand a bit why this method works. It says here that you have to rotate the sticks in the whole range, so like this. But what if you don't do that? What if you just put it to all cardinal directions like this in a plus shape and you click done. Now the left one obviously it's not really something to be excited about. We know this is gonna work. We rotated it. But the right side unintuitively it actually still works. We have the same range. And this happens because the calibration it doesn't really calibrate the circle. It calibrates only the maximum value that the axes can reach. Because the maximum value, that determines when you hit an edge. So instead of hitting the edge like this, what if I uh, put it to 0 0.90 or 92? That, and I'm looking at the values of the axes underneath the circle. So these two values right here. I'm pu pushing it until it's at 0 0.90. There we go. So what happens now? Left stick, still the same, because we hit all edges. The right stick, we have a crazy high circularity. Now, personally, I found this uh, too high. But this does show that, hey, you can increase the range just by lowering the maximum value. Because the controller now thinks that the 0 0.90 is the new one, like the new 1.00. So I'm just going to reboot it so that we have same clarity right here. And it's always important that when you are doing this, save the calibration with just rotating it in a circle because you want the baseline to be exactly this, the minimum that you can get. And from here, you reach 0 0.90 or whatever value you want. So here again, I'm just gonna demonstrate at 0 0.93. I'm just doing this very fast. I don't really mind what it is. And then for the right stick, just as a demonstration, I'm going to do something absurd. I'm going to push it to 0 0.75. Now, place your bets. What's going to happen? Left stick will have around 9%. But the right stick will have a complete square almost. So this shows the lower you go, the higher the range is going to be. 
but you don't have to do this in every direction the same value right you can do uh, the top 0 0.90 you can do the right side 0 0.75 the left and the bottom you can just all push all the way to the edge and this is how you can fine tune the calibration of the range so i'm going to reboot again and we'll check our serial clarity so this is our baseline if you don't have a baseline so if you calibrate it you set it to 0 0.90 and you don't reboot and you set it to 0 0.90 again you're actually doubling down and you're setting it to 0 0.8 or 0 0.80 so you have to keep it in mind uh, always reboot or just recalibrate again by rotating in a full circle that way you have the true calibration the, the one that you don't manipulate we can see the left side it needs a bit more range and i'm going to push that to let's say 0 0.92 because i already tried this with this controller and i know a little bit what to expect this will require a lot of trial and error if you do it for the first time uh, but often around 0 0.95 uh, that should be enough and then you can determine from there whether you need to be like higher like 0 0.98 or 0 0.92 uh, it really depends per controller and per joystick. So the top I'm going to set at 0 0.9, what should it? 0 0.93, like that. Here I'm going to do 0 0.94 because it doesn't need a lot of extra range. And the bottom I'm going to do at 0 0.93. Now, for the right joystick, we see that there's already some overshoot here. So I don't need to go completely like 0 0.75 or something. I'm going to try 0 0.98 on this side. Like that. And the top, I will do 0 0.92. Or I'll do 0 0.94. So that's the maximum value we reached in the top direction. Whatever I do in the corner, it doesn't matter. Okay, that's also something to keep in mind. So uh, if you want, you can, instead of going like this, you can first move it to a corner, then slowly drop it to the bottom until you're at a value that you like. So let's say 0 0.93. And then this one again, I'll do 0 0.93. And now we should have a range that's more to what I expect from a stock controller. And conveniently, they're almost the same. It would be funny if I had them the same exact value. <laughs> but yeah, this is around 8% and I'm very happy with this. So I'm gonna save and that's it. So now you can unplug the USB and it will stay with this calibration which is, again, a lot better than just having this. Oh, I should click on OK. So if you have this, you will notice issues in games. I don't recommend this, and it's a common misconception that this is better for some reason. So just reboot it. Now I have the saved version back. Aim for around, I used to say 6 to 8%. I now aim for around seven to eight percent now it's a little bit higher uh, that's just because i'm more comfortable with how this works so that's about it this is how you can fine tune for the dualshock 4 controllers the entire trick of fine tuning whether you use the tape or this method the plus method i call it the underlying uh, method how it works is because you're not pushing the sticks all the way to the edge now, the tape does that because you're just physically not touching it. There's a gap in between. Now, the same thing happens here if you just don't touch the edge because you're letting the controller think that it's actually a lot closer. 
so that the hole is smaller. That's what you're letting the controller think. If the hole is smaller, but you still move it across it, well, that's how you increase the range. So I hope this helps and thanks for watching.